Good evening. Um, I'd like to start by first of all showing you my happy place. This is me, um, submerged in water, surrounded by apex predators, um, and literally soaking in the wonders of the ocean. And uh, this photo was taken uh, in the Bahamas when I was taking part in a marine conservation project. And prior to this, I had only ever dived in like tourist um, dive sites. And this was the first time I got to dive in marine protected dive sites. So even though it ruined all of my previous dives, um, it did mean that I got to witness firsthand the successes um, of marine conservation and conservation efforts in general. So at this point, I knew I was, I was destined to be a marine biologist. But that didn't happen. Um, at this point, I was 18, and I had done maths, psychology, and 3D design at my, uh, for my A-levels. And despite my passions, I don't think that Sussex would have let me into this uni with no prior biology experience and just a postcard from the Bahamas as my personal statement. <laughs> um, but I didn't let that get me down. Um, even though it doesn't set you up very well for marine biology, it does set you up very well for a degree in product design. So in 2015, I started um, my course here at Sussex, and it was going well. I was you know, putting in a lot of effort, but getting out a lot of effort as well. Um, and I was enjoying it. However, one of the key principles of design is essentially seeking out problems to solve. So you can't get very far through your design journey without realizing the effects uh, and the impacts that the very products you're making and the very materials you're using to make them with, um, the negative effects that they are having on the planet that we all live, and my happy place. So this kind of cued a bit of an identity crisis because I wanted to get the true uni experience, of course. Um, and also, uh, but luckily I was at Sussex because uh, at the time Sussex was one of only two universities that offered a, a product design course that also had a module that was designing for the circular economy. And what does that mean? So traditionally, we design in a very linear way. We take something from the earth, we make something with it, and then we dispose of it. So what the circular economy aims to do is turn that line into a loop and keep materials and keep products in use for as long as possible. So armed with this knowledge and these tools, um, I entered into my final year of university. And in product design, we have a, a final year project, which is quite similar to a dissertation. Um, and I got to write my own brief. So I wanted to make the most sustainable pro product possible. Um, but I thought the best way of doing that is actually to add value to waste and do something with waste materials. So my brief was add value to waste. And I approached my university lecturers and I said, does anyone have any waste? <laughs> Um, and luckily, one of my lecturers, Claire Potter, um, she was doing some work with a fish processing plant down in New Haven. Um, and that is basically where the fish comes in and they gut it and it comes out as like filleted fish. So I went there uh, with Claire uh, on a cold December afternoon wearing canvas converse, which was a terrible idea. <laughs> um, and we kind of got to see all of their different waste streams. And I could have done something with their cardboard waste. I could have done something with their polystyrene waste. Um, but ultimately, it was when I was walked over to the big blue 400 kilogram tub of fish, heads, skins, scales, bones, blood, guts, um, that bizarrely, my eyes lit up. <laughs> Bit weird. Um, and 
But it was when I felt the skins and the scales in my hands, they were so strong and flexible. I was like, there's something here that I want to work with. And at that point, I go home with a bag of skins and a bag of scales, and I throw my Converse in the wash, um, <laughs> and I get to work. So at this point, I didn't know I was going to make a material. At this point, my brief was to add value to that waste. So I kind of fell into, and because of this, I, I essentially let the waste guide me. Um, so I fell into a bit of a rabbit hole of researching uh, proteins and um, binders from the ocean and nat nature's binders like agar. Um, and also, it was when I started my experiments. So I conducted over 100 different experiments in my kitchen. And so, you know, I was blending things. I was freezing things. I was adding fibers. I was setting things on fire. I was just <laughs> doing anything I could really think of to try and understand how the materials were interacting um, and how I could you know, tweak things to make it better. So after those 100 odd experiments, um, I finally had a consistent process um, and formula that, that generated a, a kind of repeatable and consistent bioplastic film um, that was stronger than an LDPE carrier bag, uh, safer because it was made from completely food grade safe ingredients, um, and also uh, more sustainable because it was uh, biodegradable in uh, six weeks. So you might think at that point I knew I was onto something. But oddly enough, it wasn't actually until I got two sheets and sewed them together that it kind of dawned on me that this was more than a material, like this could become a product. And at that point, it was the end of my degree, uh, so I had to wrap up the project um, and present it to my lecturers. And I was quite relieved to see the back of it, <laughs> um, as most people are when they finish their dissertations. Um, and it, but it wasn't just my lecturers at that final year presentation. There was also a Design Sussex alumna there as well. And he got in contact with me uh, to say that I really should apply to the James Dyson Award. And for context, the James Dyson Award is a student, uh, an international student award um, across, uh, for engineering, uh, and it's across 27 different countries. And I kind of laughed it off because um, the James Dyson Award is a very traditional engineering award. Think uh, turbines, thermodynamics, engines. It's not exactly blending up fish scales in your mum's blender. Um, <laughs> however, he was very persistent, um, and I, I said, yes, I would apply. And I thought nothing of it. And then I get a phone call in uh, early August to, from the James Dyson Award to say that I had won the UK uh, National James Dyson Award. And I was so chuffed. I thought this would you know, really help me stand out when I'm applying for jobs. Um, and it came with £2,000 funding, which wasn't really enough to start a company, but it was enough to be reparations from the battle that was a product design degree. So, um, and I thought nothing of it. <laughs> and then, um, on the 15th of October, 2019, I get a phone call again from the James Dyson Award to say that I've won the International James Dyson Award, which comes with £30,000 funding. That is enough to at least start a company. <laughs> so, and I was just overwhelmed and... Um, quite shocked. And I think a good example of this is what I did next. So the very first thing I did when I found out I'd won the James Dyson Award was check if I needed to write a will. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to write a will. Um, so, and the second thing I wanted to do was run into my family and tell them I'd won the International James Dyson Award. Um, but the 15th of October is my sister's birthday, so can't steal the limelight. <laughs> um, but I told them the next day, and um, I told my lecturers as well, and I think I got 
uh, loads of emojis and celebrations from them. And then um, my sister, I think, said, Yas Queen. <laughs> Probably murdered that. Um, and, <laughs> and then my mum said, bloody hell loose. Um, and I couldn't really agree more, mum. Uh, so um, that point, it was just a bit bonkers. Um, I was getting contacted from uh, every type of medium, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, blog, emails, phone calls, people contacting my family to get through to me, um, and also the university as well. And, um, and also I was being featured in some really prestigious um, places like Forbes and The Guardian and the BBC. Um, so it really added rocket fuel to the project. Um, and I even got invited to the UN to talk at an FAO symposium event. So my first paycheck out of uni was from the UN. So I thought, it's just kind of downhill from there. Like, might as well retire. Um, but I didn't retire. I did the opposite. I started a company. Um, so in 2020, uh, February 2020, I started my company, Marina Tex. And um, despite starting a company on the brink of a pandemic, I've been able to progress it. We've won seven industry awards, uh, one of which being the Social Impact Prize uh, from Startup Sussex. Um, we've also been on uh, incubator and accelerator programs to try and basically teach me business. Um, and one of which was the Sussex Accelerator. Um, and also managed to conduct two more R&D packages to essentially classify and replicate, so understand more about what the material is capable of, and then replicate it to check it wasn't just a fluke in my kitchen, and it wasn't. Um, and then the third one, which is actually going on as we speak, is to um, optimise the films for different applications and for different sectors. So I would love to tell you at this point the marine text will be finished and on the shelves at the end of the year. Um, but this is very much the beginning of my journey. And however, I do have a presentation tomorrow with Innovate UK for um, a funding project. So if that gets funded, not only will I be able to continue the project for another 15 months, but I'll also be able to go on holiday and hopefully return to my happy place. <laughs> so wish me luck. Thank you very much. <laughs>